Hello everyone, my name is Malik L. Train. I'm the host of Health Awareness Talk for SirBroadcast.com. I'm here today to um, talking with uh, Sifu Han Lee. Hello, Han, how you doing? Hello, Malik. Oh, Thanks for inviting me to the show. Uh, super, thank you, Sifu Lee. And I'm here with Sifu, um, uh, Dale Dugas, Arm Palm. Hello, Dale. How we doing? Oh, just terrific, thanks. Now everybody here today, um, we're going to watch. We're going to quickly. We're going to watch a little quick um, example of what a coconut break is. Uh, Dale, he specializes in um, arm palm techniques, also arm body techniques, and you got you actually got one, so we can see you do it for real. We're going to watch the video first, and then we're going to watch you do your thing. Okay, Dale. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you for thank you for the invitation. Hey, you definitely you welcome. Hey, you ready for this, yep. Robert? Yep. All right, playing the video. Hello, my name is Dale Dugas. I'm an acupuncturist herbalist as well as a kung fu teacher here in Hanover, Massachusetts. Today, I'm going to be doing some coconut breaking. I've had some requests, and I'm going to be doing a break in the hand as well as a break on the support. Uh, for more information on iron palm training, iron body training, the kung fu training that I provide here, please call me at 781-829-9355. I teach Tai Chi on Tuesday evenings, Wednesday and Friday mornings. Wednesday evenings, I teach South Mantis Kung Fu. Thank you. And without further ado, let's break some coconuts. Now, just to show you, this is in the netting. I just got it from the store. You can hear it. Yeah. It's in the netting. I just bought it at the store down the street. What I'm going to do is going to be breaking this in my hand. Ain't no way. It ain't no friggin' it's way. It's broken. Again. Now I'm going to try a hammer fist from South Manus, Galchoy. That one was didn't have a lot of liquid in it. It was kind of dry. Now I'll do one on a support. Again, this is a table, an iron palm training table that my Kung Fu brother Bob Mayo makes. He's located in Merrimack, New Hampshire. He's a Julung Babajang uh, teacher. And again, it's in the netting. There's a seam here. This might be a little easier to break. Easy. That is too easy, my friend. That is too frigging easy. Well, for somebody who has really big hands to begin with, um, the training then makes, you know, it gives you an ability to, to strike through most objects that other people really have a problem with. Right. Um, but it's not what the training is about. It's, it's about other things. It's about learning how to connect to the ground. There's a whole, you know, training methodology that we could probably waste the whole evening talking about. <laughs> but suffice to say is the hitting of the bag is one piece of that, you know, complete training, whole body training. And that breaking is only a gauge to, you know, test your skills. It's not what it's really about. It's just something you can show people, show yourself, show your teachers, instructors, hey, you know, boom, hey, I can break so many things or this, that, the other thing, you know, within your system using the techniques you have. So it's interesting. It's fun. And, you know, a couple times a year to break. It's not like something you do all the time because the more you break, you're putting a lot of stress, you know, on your hands, mm -hmm, on your body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, okay. even when you're in good health, it's just, you know, you're banging on yourself. Even though you're not really banging on yourself, you're banging on something hard. Uh -huh. But do, but doing the iron body training as well, you know, once or twice a year is okay, but all the time, you know, you're putting yourself at risk for, you know, injury. It's like anything. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, slow and steady definitely wins the race. Hey, Han. Yes, sir. What do you think about that video and that coconut breaking? I mean, how impressive is that from your martial arts standpoint? That is very impressive. And uh, one thing I'm glad that uh, Master Dugas uh, mentioned uh, how hard it is on the body. Hmm. And so i like to ask him, um, based on your experience and in training people, I know that a lot of uh, young people and 
martial artists who start out, they try to do too much and they don't have a proper instructor and then they wind up hurting themselves and and you know in Chinese medicine we have this uh, what we call blood stagnation yeah. and these you can actually get uh, clotting, blood clots and then although you may not realize it when you're young then uh, later on in life you'll have uh, things like arthritis and other blockages so it's really important uh, to train properly and know how to do it and you, you could see from Master Dugas's hands they were not deformed all completely normal and soft mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so so many of these folks who practice iron palm mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. go um, too, too far and they train improperly and they hurt themselves that is so, that is so true true you know no. <sighs> Echo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What's the sport? Mr. Lee, check your uh, speakers. Is evidently they're a little bit too loud. We get oh, the feedback. Too loud? Yeah, we're getting the feedback. Okay. How how is this? Let's see. All right, that's good. Is okay. that better? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, uh, one thing um, I was telling people about uh, uh, Master Hanley. What's the cro what in your opinion? Uh, what's the crossover effect of arm palm training? into um, sports? You know, uh, iron palm training, martial arts training, the training that you do, Malik, I think is, uh, is uh, not an end in itself, but it's a discipline. So whatever art you're in, whether it's dancing or martial arts, it's the uh, discipline and the time and energy it takes to reach uh, an end goal, so to better yourself. So uh, in Kung Fu, Kung Fu, the, the uh, translation uh, meaning of Kung Fu is time and effort. Mm -hmm. You make time and effort into doing something and you do it properly, then you're going to reach your end goal. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely it. Yeah. All right, from aspect, most things in, um, we play in sports, uh, you got to grab something. All right. So we're looking at a football. You're actually grabbing the football, either to hold on to it or even to throw it. We're looking for tennis. You're actually grabbing the um, tennis racket. Okay. When you're looking at uh, even bowling, all right, you got to put your fingers in in order to roll your ball. So if arm palm training will actually significantly increase the strength of your uh, and strength, your tendons, ligament, bones of your fingers, of your wrist, of your hands of your forearms and I think that would transfer to a greater output of power in these particular sports. Uh, what's your opinion on that um, Master Lee? Well I, I'll defer to Master Dugas on the uh, iron palm. I would, I would say that the focus is uh, different from uh, the grabbing. So mm -hmm. you, you know you mentioned football and uh, I hope uh, people will be uh, watching this show after they watch this. <laughs> Super Bowl, yeah. but um, you know, in terms of uh, strengthening, you know, in martial arts we have different ways of strengthening our grip. You know, we have the uh, sandbag technique. You know, throwing sandbags around. I, I like I like these things. I don't know if you can see them uh -huh. here. I have uh, bring yours out there. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, uh, let's see yours. The, huh? uh, let's balls. see. It, bring it up. Yeah, there you balls, go. Right? Uh huh. And th these are nice because uh, if you get mad at somebody, you can also throw them at people. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel you. All right, now we talked a little bit yesterday, Dale, about the transfer of arm palming, uh, arm palm techniques into uh, professional and the sports in general. Um, you've had some time to think about that. Uh, give me your ideas. Well. The whole, you know, what we call iron palm is actually one piece of something that you could probably better call iron skills. Mm -hmm. You're not going to just train the palm. You're going to train the entire hand. You're, you know, then there's training to train the, the iron arm, you know, your forearm training. There's elbow training in some systems. There's shoulder training in a lot of systems where they're actually using two-man training and hitting bags and shoulder trees press. and all kinds. Mm -hmm. So you're training a, a body strike through the shoulder, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's, you know, body training itself. So to say iron palm, you know, 
we were talking about a little earlier. Master Lee was talking about the grip. On um, body skills, yes. In Iron Palm, it's not really, you know, the grip training isn't really focused. The bag tapping and slapping over time will increase your tendons and your ligaments. But another kind of training he was talking about is that sandbag tra mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. Some people some people take that to another level where they get a bucket full of beans. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is they start pressing their fingers and their hands through the beans. Uh, it's resistance. And then when they're in the bucket, they're, they're making hand shapes, they're flapping, they're squeezing, they're gripping. That is really good training for all those muscles in the forearms and in the hands. Mm -hmm. And then when you, you know, want to relax at night and you've got your, you know, these are called Baoding Wan in Chinese. Mm -hmm. Baoding is a city in northern China where these were, you know, well known. Yes, yes. And they so have iron palm, iron palm training in itself really doesn't talk about finger training, but in the overall scope of what we call iron skills training, you know, iron, whatever training, iron palm, arm, finger, shin, you can train any part of your body if you want to. Right. You know, and if you, you know, if you'd like, of course. Again, it's just time and effort, as Master Lee talked about. Uh -huh. You want to train your gong fu. You want to train your iron palm gong fu or your you know, whatever system of martial arts you're studying, you want to train it because if you don't train it, then you're not going to get any better. And if you don't get any better, then, well, people are going to surpass you and, you know, there's things like that. So, uh, as an acupuncturist, I'm always trying to better myself, you know, for my patients, you know, benefit. It's not mm -hmm. just for me, mm -hmm. it's for them. Mm -hmm. My martial arts skills, if I don't train, you know, it's fun to teach people, not because I want to teach people, but I have some training partners that I can actually interact with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, looking at all this stuff, if you want to train your hands, it's not just iron palm. There's other training involved. I just wanted to. I just wanted to kind of give a little bit more explanation on it because we're talking not just of palm, but of talking of let's just say iron arm training mm -hmm. and talk about the entire arm. We can train the entire arm. You know, whether for defensive or for offensive, because if you're if you're getting a grip strength increase and a muscular strength increase in this whole system, we should be able to measure an increase in grip strength, an increase in ability to hold, you know, sport, you know, equipment, whether it's sticks or balls or what have you. So, mm -hmm. again, we could do before and after. Take a baseline before. Give the people this training, give them a certain training time, and then say, okay, in so many months, we're going to come back and we're going to measure you. You should see a, you know, increase. How dramatic, again, is dependent on the person and how much they do. Okay. You know? All right. Okay. See, the whole thing is we got this thing called muscles. In the, West, in the Western world, our primary focus is on muscle development, okay, as far as how strong that we get with the bench press and all this other type stuff. Yep. In Eastern perspective, the focus is on tendon, ligament, bone development, and also the condition of one's internal organs. Okay? So, when we're looking at, uh, from, um, I know, we know from anatomy and physiology, the muscle just represents the power source. It pulls and everything. Tendons mm -hmm. and ligaments are the links actually to the bones or to uh, the origins and distal spots throughout, located throughout the body. Okay, yeah. so yeah. we're only as strong as those tendons and ligaments are. Okay, so by developing stronger tendons and ligaments, we can get more out of the muscles. Okay, we could get develop more power out the muscles. That's why when I look at you, you don't have as big, you can't really see the muscles flexed in your arm and everything. But you got, but you can get more out of the muscles that you do have, mm. even though they're half my size, because your tendons and ligaments are twice as thick. Okay, so when I go to personal trainers and I ask them what they get got in order to develop muscles. They got a whole array of things that they can use in order to develop the physical muscles because that's our perspective. But when asked, what do we have? What muscle? What training exercises do you have in order to develop ten ligaments and bones? Ninety-nine percent of them do not have a clue. All right. So this is the Eastern perspective that we're adding to the personal training or to the athletic. 
um, menu that's already out there. So we have uh, athletes and coaches out there who's looking to get that competitive advantage over other people to win championships. Tendon, ligament, and bone development is actually it because you can be half the size of somebody and be twice as strong as they are because your tendon and ligament strength has been developed. Okay, so you won't have a it, you won't have a decrease in speed. You can have you can be twice as strong as somebody, although they're twice as big as you, because your tendons and ligaments have been developed. This is why you see these me people who are mechanics, people who are farmers, people who are bricklayers and stuff, who's been doing these exercises using their hands and stuff on a continuous basis all the all these years. They got what they they got that that natural strength, their tendons and ligaments have actually developed. And this is what we're looking at as far as the uh, not only the conditioning of the exercises with the arm palm and the arm body skills and just the arm skills all together, we're looking at the dit dal or the formulation that's actually used after the conditioning that can actually feed the tendons, feed the ligaments, feed the bones in order that they can grow stronger. Now if I ask somebody how to build the muscles they will say eat six meals a day. Eat six meals a day, thirty to four thirty to forty grams of protein every three to four hours. That's an exercise and get rest. That's what you need in order to build the muscles. But then as a personal trainer, if I was to go ask somebody or if I go train, what do I need to do in order to build the tendons and ligaments? And they'll be like, the most they'll have is isometrics. That's it. Okay? But isometrics is not going to uh, not going to break no coconuts, and isometrics is not going to help to protect you from the injury. All right, but doing the exercises, the plyometrics, all those specific exercises that y'all do in kung fu, it develops these tendons and, lig uh, tendons and ligaments. It augments the strength to be able to for you to be able to take a basketball and throw it halfway, uh, throw it to the other end, you one end on the other, and it'd be no problem. Take a football and throw it all the way down from the field from one end to the other because of the increase of the de uh, the tendon, ligament, and bone density at the same time learning how to be healthy. Okay, so this is what this radio program is all about today for these athletes out there, for these coaches and stuff out there, is learning how to use these traditional methods in order for you to become better athletes, in order for your teams to actually win, have a better attitude, and also to be healthy. Okay, so not only we have the dit dowel that helps to feed through the skin, the uh, tendons, ligaments, and uh, tendons, ligaments, and the bones, but you also got the dit dowel, what Han Lee was talking about. Uh, there's different type of um, dit dowels that you actually use in order to uh, break up certain conditions within the body. But, you know, it's like I said, but how many people, how many people out there are ver versed in dit dowel and how to make them? Not many. Uh, not many, fellas. It's you, Han. It's you, Dugas. But most people don't know how to do it. And these athletes are individuals, meaning yep. that they're going to go through, when they're going through this type of training, it's different things are going to be going on throughout their body. And they're going to must go to a specialist, somebody who's familiar with the dit dial and how it works and everything, to get these things addressed. Okay, so if you're an athlete and you're listening to it, you must go to somebody uh, and you're looking to enhance your tendon, ligament, and bone strength in order to increase your strength, in order to increase your speed, in order to increase your durability, in order to increase your endurance. You must go find specialists such as um, Master Han Lee and Master Dale Dugas who can actually help you out with that. Does it work? You just saw my, you just saw my man Dale here break coconuts in front of you. Okay? If you're running and somebody's trying to stop you or whatever like that, and you're just doing a little tap or whatever, that more than likely that dude's going to be out the way a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why? Because you've been doing this year. Now, the one thing out there on the radio I want you to understand also V, is this. This does not happen overnight. How long did you have to train, Dale, in order just, just to level one? <clears throat> My teacher who instructed me on, on a method, he said, you're not going to do anything for the first year except train. Don't break anything. It's twice a day, morning and evening, for one year. And then the second year was once a day for the second year. So I did two years of training, 
First year was twice a day, the second year was once a day, and then after that, I trade it whenever I feel like I want to. It's it's a skill like anything. If you want to brush up on it, brush up on it. If you you know, if you want to trade it every day, it's not going to hurt you. Iron skills training does not destroy you. It should build you up. It should increase your strength. It should increase your energy. It should, you know, give you health benefits, not health detriments. Right. Um, and so, like you were talking about, using the herbs, you know, the external herbs, there's internal herbs, you know, acupuncture, acupressure. I'm going to defer to Master Lee on this because he's, he's been doing this longer than I have. And I can assume, you know, I can assume that he's seen a lot of people in the clinical setting and he has, you know, really good protocols for dealing with, you know, all manner of injuries as well as people who want to come in and say, hey, I want to run at better levels, you know, give me a tune-up, mm -hmm. you know. So please, I, Master Lee, I would love to hear, you know, what you think about, you know, treating, treating athletes, you know, with DITA. Yeah, maybe for our uh, audience, we can define what uh, Deet Da Jiao is. That would be great, um, sir. Because, uh, well, Deet Da in, uh, in Cantonese means uh, uh, fall hit or hit fall. So, Jiao is wine. So, it's hit fall wine or it's a uh, uh, liniment for traumatic injuries. So, there are different types of and there are different ways of using it for, for training and for healing injuries. I can tell you a story about how I got involved and one of the, uh, the impetuses for me to get into Chinese medicine was when I was a kid growing up in New York, I would be so battered and bruised. I got into a lot of schoolyard fights. Mm -hmm. And my mother was so worried. I remember one time somebody threw a shoe at me, hit me in the face, and it was all black and blue. But my uncle Henry, who uh, who was an herbalist, and he tried to teach me kung fu, but I never listened to him. He, he didn't look like a kung fu guy. In any case, I mean, it completely saved me, and it made my my bruises disappear. And uh, I said, "Gee, I got to learn this medicine." So that was an impetus for me to uh, start studying Chinese medicine and martial arts. But uh, there are different ways to, to brew uh, Dita medicine. I know that Master Dugas uh, sells Dita uh, Jiao, different types of training uh, uh, Jiaos in his, uh, from his business. And there are, there is a whole range of uh, Dita medicines that you that people can buy online as well as uh, buy from um, and make make on their own. I will comment and maybe ask him because some people say, okay, some people think that if you just get some brand off the off the uh, off the shelf, you know, you can use it for any purpose. There are cooling dita gels and there are warming dita gels that are neutral dita gels. So depending on what the stage of, say, your training or your injury is, it, it would be very harmful for you, for you to use the wrong kind. Mm. Do you have any comments on that, Master Dukas? It's, it's, you know, like you said, it, depending on your injury, you can come in with something that's brand new, that's very hot and swollen. Say you, were, you, you got really overzealous at training and you did something and the next day you wake up and your, your forearm is on fire and it's all swollen. Well, that's a hot injury. It's a new injury. We wouldn't want to put a very hot dit da jiao liniment on that because it's probably going to make it feel worse. And it might even increase the swelling because it's already hot. So you're kind of like putting gasoline on a fire. It increases the heat. Now, for somebody who comes in presenting with a hot, you know, swollen injury, as Master Lee said, you'd want to use some kind of neutral or cooling liniment and you know apply that and because you want to get that swelling down because the, you know they're in active inflammation it hurts so decreasing the swelling getting rid of some of those fluids that are trapped in that area is the first step in addressing the injury yes. And so yeah cooling and some people don't even use a jow at first they have um they take cooling herbs and they put them in some kind of medium either olive oil and beeswax or petroleum jelly and then they put this this paste they call that dita gao, gao a paste. Some people put a paste on, then kind of wrap it loosely in gauze, 
and they let that sit for 12 hours and then that takes the swelling out then they start working on it with some kind of moving a neutral moving you know liniment so yes yeah. You know, it's interesting, you know, based on what you see, we, in my clinic, I rarely see somebody who comes in with an active swollen injury. Mm -hmm. Usually it's a day or two later, sometimes mm -hmm. longer, but, you know, I do have the herbs ready in case somebody comes in with something brand new. I'm like, great, I've got this cooling stuff. Let's put it on and see how good it works. You know, usually what I do is I see somebody said, oh, over the weekend I fell down and I got hurt. And I see them on Monday when they did it on Saturday. So mm -hmm. usually the swelling's down and I can immediately get, you know, a really strong moving liniment on there and open up that injury area. In other words, if a person um, was in practice or something like that, training practice for football, basketball, hockey, or whatever, they yep. got some type of injury, and if they were to come to see you, um, to see you or Master Lee, that you'll be able to know exactly what type of dit dow they would need in order to help to accelerate the healing of that injury. Correct? That is correct. Yeah, is that correct, Master Lee? Yes. Uh yeah, talking about injuries and about um, cooling uh, dita jiaos, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things that we do in Chinese medicine is kind of uh, contrary to what uh, Western uh, medicine practitioners do. For example, you know the uh, acronym RICE, correct? Mm -hmm. Rest, uh, ice, compression, and elevation. Mm -hmm. So, suppose you... Uh, running down a football field and you sprain your ankle, right? Your trainer would say, okay, use the, uh, use the rice method. Now, in Chinese medicine, we don't apply ice to the injury. We apply cooling herbs because ice, we consider, is very shocking to the system. So if you apply ice to um, an injury, uh, later on you may uh, develop arthritis conditions. So we have cooling herbs for that. Mm -hmm. A lot of our Dita Jiaos uh, cannot be applied to an open wound. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful. Some, some herbs uh, you can't apply to an open wound because they're toxic. Mm -hmm. Now some of the Dita Jiaos you can actually take internally, but of course you have to be careful not to poison yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, now get, I'm moving away from the ones, uh, the dit dials that are actually uh, for breaking up bruises, cooling, hot, and all that. I'm interested, are there dit dials that can actually strengthen your tendons, your ligaments, and your bones, fellas? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, uh, we'll start off with you, Master Dugas. Um, th there are, you know, there are herbs that are designed, you know, or, you know, classified. When we learn all this information, we use what's called the Materia Medica, and every culture has a Materia Medica. It is what they, you know, it's like the old medicine of that culture. Anyway, uh -huh. the Chinese Materia Medica has all these herbs classified into different groups, and what do they do? There are herbs for, you know, um, helping deal with tendons, you know, sending blood and nutrients for the tendons. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Some, of those, some of those herbs are neutral. In other words, they're not hot or cold. Others are hot. There might even be a few cold ones, you know, off the top of my head, I don't know. Some of these books are very large and, you know, contain a, you know, plethora of information. So, but right off the top of my head, I know there's a couple of herbs that, you know, when people come in and they tell me, oh, yeah, I've got tennis elbow, golf elbow, you know, they've got, you know, tendonitis going on in these areas of their arms. I've got a liniment that's got a lot of herbs for tendons, so I use that with great success with acupuncture. Mm -hmm. You know, as well as, you know, tween on massage. Mm -hmm. I'm not a mm -hmm. massage therapist, but as a acupuncturist, I get in there and I start, you know, if there's some, you know, painful muscles, I'll go in and reach in and, you know, break it up. You know, okay. that's another that's another great thing at having really strong hands is I, I don't have to use tools in my clinic. I just use my hands, you know, mm -hmm. grab, grab, scrape, scrape, you know, poke, poke. Okay. All right. All right, that sounds good. Um, again, same question, Master Lee. Uh, the, um, the, is there dit dials that you can use for development of your tendon, ligaments, and your bones to make you stronger? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with uh, Master Dugas, and uh, he talked about the Materia Medica. Uh, for our audience, many of whom may just uh, be uh, uh, athletes or they're, they're not really healthcare practitioners, uh, some of the simple things you can do to strengthen your ligaments and tendons is to eat foods 
uh, to do that. So uh, if you don't want to go to an herb shop, you can eat uh, tendons. Uh, for example, there's uh, Vietnamese uh, noodles called pho, which, uh, and they cook up the tendons so that they're uh, very, very soft. And so if you eat uh, light products, mm -hmm. you know, if, you, if your kidneys are weak, we, we suggest you eat uh, kidneys, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And if your tendons are weak and ligaments are weak, then you can get, go to your local Vietnamese uh, restaurant and order um, beef uh, s noodles with, with tendons, and that will strengthen your tendons. They also say that jello, um, the arthritis cure. Yeah, gelatin, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jello is made out of tendons and stuff. That also strengthens up your tendons and ligaments. Now, a lot of uh, people who uh, got this advertisement for this show, uh, it was generally it was called for dit dow for athletic enhancement and conditioning and stuff. So, uh, y'all have any uh, special dit dow formulations that you can actually talk about on the air? Something that you uh, uh, that you would rarely put out. Well, you know, all the martial arts schools have what they call secret formulas, right? But in fact, they're not really that secret. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Of course, we, we want to think that our formulas and our recipes are the best. Yes. But uh, for, the general, uh, for the general public, they can go online and, and take a look and go to uh, Master Dukas's website and order from him, and he can probably tell them what type of liniments that they need because, again, it's like self-medicating. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they want to go online and they'll, they'll order, say, for example, ginseng, right? Because mm -hmm. everybody wants to have ginseng. But ginseng, for the wrong person, for the wrong condition, will be very harmful. That is so true. So, now, one, uh, one thing that people can do if they're interested in the subject, and it's a fascinating subject, it can help people become uh, better athletes and to uh, heal themselves and heal common injuries, sports injuries, is a book by, uh, by Tom Bissio. Tom Bissio. It's called um, From the Tiger's uh, Tooth. I think, it's, is it From the Tiger's Tooth? Uh, tooth from the Tiger's Mouth, yes. Oh, yeah. Tooth from the Tiger's Mouth. Thank you. Welcome. And it's, it's a great book because uh, Bissio is a martial artist as well as a Chinese medicine practitioner. And he gives formulas for uh, deep da jiao as well as uh, liniments. And he explains things that are on the market today that people can order from Amazon. Yep. Okay. That sounds, um, that sounds definitely good. Uh, what type of, um, uh, Dugas, what type of um, dit dao do you sell of the most at your shop anyway? Um, I sell more injury formulas. I mean, there are people who buy training formulas. In other words, people that are training you know martial arts mma boxing wrestling you know they're 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 getting beat up so they have a i have a good formula for you know bumps and bruises Do and you make it yourself other, or what i make i i make all my formulas myself and i make them in an old way i cook them actually i don't do what's called cold soaking cold soaking is where you take your herbs and you put them in a container and then you add the medium and the medium is usually alcohol mhm mm uh, some herbs, you know, you need 50-50 uh, mix is the best because some herbs need alcohol to dissolve, others need water. So when you have them together and have the perfect mix of alcohol and water, mm -hmm. you get a really strong solution. I was taught how to cook liniments because it's a little different. It's a little old school. And I met somebody who did this and they taught me. And I like the product. I like the result. Now, that doesn't mean cold soaking your herbs is inferior or, or anything like that. It just means there are you know, many different ways to make a liniment. You can do low heat, you can do cold soaking, you can do cooking where you're, you know, you're doing high heat for very certain amounts of time, pressure cookers. You can get really elaborate with making liniments, but the easiest way is just you're going to take the herbs, whatever formula you get, you're going to put it in a, a glass container, you're going to add alcohol, you're going to put, you know, you're going to seal the container mm -hmm. and then put it somewhere, put it somewhere dark. It's great to put in the closet. Mm -hmm. You know, or put it in the basement or the garage if you know if it's nice and dark, and then you shake it up, you know, because you want to basically try to get as much active components from the herbs into the solution, into mm -hmm. the liquid, mm -hmm. and then that's the liquid you rub, you know, on your injuries or on your areas that you're training. 
And so, yeah, it's it's fun. Um, my house smells like a curry shop. If you look behind me, these are all my herbs. This is my office, and I'm sitting in my office, so I have like almost 300 herbs in these containers. And then you can't see because I'm sitting down, but above, I've got like all the herbs on top. So it's mm-hmm. it's just Florida, you know, Florida ceiling herbs here. This is my herb room, and it's very aromatic, and it smells very. It smells wonderful when I start cooking these things, and people always, res- you know, respond and say. Wow, that smells really good. What are you making? Chinese food? I go, no, I'm making, you know, medicine. medicine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's interesting. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Now, um, Master Chun Li um, Lin of uh, Spring Forest uh, Qigong, um, he has a, a, a spr- expression that he has uh, good, better, and best. Remember that, Han Lee? Yeah, that's a great expression. Yes. So there's a good way to use the Dit Dao. There's a. Um, there's a good way, there's a better way, and then there's the best way. Okay, good, better, and best. So I think the good way is just you going in and just uh, finding a good. Uh, what is the? All right, I'm gonna ask each y'all what's this question, uh, Master Hanley. What is the good, better, and best way for the application of Dit Dao? The best way is to first of all uh, determine what your goal is. Mm-hmm. If your goal is to treat a, tr- a traumatic injury, then would, you would get a, a formula that um, does that. If it's an acute injury, as Master Duga said, you would get a cooling uh, formula until you reach uh, stage two or three of the injury, and then you might get a, a neutral or warming formula. Now, if it's for training purposes, then uh, you would have a different uh, purpose for doing that. I, I like to kind of emphasize the, the importance of consulting a good uh, herbal practitioner and that's best. so that you don't uh, self-diagnose what your problem is. No. <laughs> but I know that people will do that. People will want to do an over-the-counter thing. So I'd like to recommend a couple of things that everyone should have in their medicine cabinet, whether whether you're an athlete or not, or you're you're just uh, Joe Blow or Joe Sixpack and you want to have something in your medicine cabinet, in case you have a cut or scratch or you get a sprain or or something like that. So one is a five-photo brand uh, liniment that you can get on online. What I, what I like about Five Photo Brand is that you can actually apply it as an antiseptic, and so if it's a good first aid uh, type liniment, and you can use it as a, a dita a jiao because it's a neutral, uh, thermally neutral kind of uh, uh, dita jiao. Mm-hmm. The sec the second thing, and of course you can't drink it; you you just apply it uh, as a topical. Now, the second thing that is very useful is called uh, Yunnan Baiyao. Yunnan Baiyao is is very, very uh, good, a good formula. It's a secret formula, actually, that you can order online. And uh, the Chinese army has their first aid bandages uh, impregnated with this uh, Yunnan Baiyao, it's a powder. It's the, the meaning is the powder, white powder from Yunnan province. So it's a secret formula, but anyway, it's available now. And you can apply it topically, and you can also take it internally. Now, I, I don't suggest that people take it internally unless they consult their um, herbal uh, practitioner. But as far as say a cut or a wound because in the in martial arts we we uh, have a lot of injuries from trying to spear spear each other with uh, sharp objects and stuff like that and so uh, I always keep it handy and when as soon as you apply it the the it's very healing and the bleeding stops it stops bleeding but the yes. miraculous thing is that it doesn't clot up so it stops bleeding without uh, um, creating blood clots, so it can heal faster. Mm-hmm. And there's there's a, a little red pill that you take that comes with every package for shock. 
So if people go into shock, they can take this little red pill. Uh, Master Dugas, you, you know about this. you have any comments on this? Oh, Unambaya was great. Um, there was a period where we, you know, it's back on the market, but there was a little period where it was off the market and, and the prices went up. It was interesting because it's so, you, it's very, it's widely used. Um, great for for first aid kit, you know, because yeah, like Master Lee was saying, when you're training and you get to certain levels, you start picking up implements and tools and you start applying them, you know, at another person and while they have an implement or tool and they're trying to do the same thing. And your fingers get smashed, you get cut, not seriously, but you know, you get cuts and scrapes, you don't want to get infected, so you put the powder on the wound and it burns it actually cauterizes and depending wow. on you know the big size of the scratch i've had i remember putting it on for the first time and i was amazed because you know little pinch of powder put a band-aid on it and next thing you know you're like oh it's not bleeding anymore wow you know? that is so cool i just got a um message uh i just got a message um master Douglas. uh you got that coconut with you uh, no, I don't have a coconut with oh, me. Oh, okay, I'll have to say it. <laughs> I know, people People come up to me at, at, when I'm doing workshops, and they hand me stuff, and they go, can you break this for me? Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay, and, you know, I go to break it over them, and they go, hey, no, that's not what I meant. I'm like, well, you didn't say how to break it, you just asked me to break it. So, you know, I'm like, come here, and, you know, gunk, no, no, you know. He didn't but, bring a coconut. All right, you got that, everyone. He didn't. He didn't bring the coconut. Maybe next time. <laughs> oh, it's Sunday. It's my day off. You and know, it's Super no, Bowl. no, no. Yeah, in the Super Bowl. All right, you know, um, <laughs> you got also thing about arm body. Okay, oh, you also do this thing on arm body. Isn't that right? Um, it is. I mean, a lot of people do this kind of training. It's not anything. It's not the secret of. Like Master Lee was talking about, they like to market some of this information in, in these very strange ways and make it seem mystical and magical. And mm -hmm. It actually is just grounded in a lot of physics and science. And the iron body training I was exposed to was to first develop the fascia of the body by doing various exercises. Okay, um, d uh, d Dugas, what is fascia for anybody who don't know? Fascia, now fascia for those of you, it's there's a, there's a layer of tissue that is between our you know between the muscles and the organs and it covers the entire body it it is like a suit it's a suit of tissue and when you train the tissue it thickens it strengthens and what you then can do is then you can use the body in a much more coordinated fashion than if you did not train these things mm -hmm. you know we talk about body coordination you know mind body you know is mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. well there is a physical connection that you know everything from, from head to toe front to back there's a connection with this fascia and so if you can strengthen it and then you can use it in application and what we do is I you know the iron body training is a lot of twisting you know how I learned it first there's a lot of wow. twisting exercises really? and you, okay. you put you put stress and tension into the body and as we know if you look up western anatomy mm -hmm. you know definitions there are two laws that we're that we're talking about here we're talking about wolf's law and davis's law when you put stress on the body onto muscles and to fibers they thicken they get stronger mm -hmm. over time they remodel they get denser mm -hmm. the same thing happens with osseous tissue bone tissue if you put stress into a bone it's going to get stronger and it's going to get you know thicker over time. Mm -hmm. That's why resistant exercise is really great for the bone density in the body because when you put stress into the body by doing body weight, by doing kung fu, by doing tai chi, even just doing standing forms of meditation, mm -hmm. you're going to increase you know the bone density of your lower body because that's how we connect to the ground. And gravity and your body mass will then go through, you know, the, the force is going to go through your structure, your body's going to get stronger by just standing still. So, you know, that's the other thing we can talk about is all this so-called internal training and quiet training mm -hmm. that are actually very, you know, they, they lead to very active forms of application. In mm -hmm. essence, the training is very quiet and slow, but then you can then use that and go on and, you know, be faster, stronger, because like we were talking about before, you're not only you know training the muscles to be stronger but the more you relax and the more muscle fibers you can relax and have them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know elongate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then that means you can take those muscle fibers and use them in movements and mm -hmm. so you have more muscle fibers you can move faster if you can move your mass faster 
you're going to have more power. It's simple physics. How does twisting uh, increase the density of the fascia on the muscle? Well, when you're, you're standing in a stance and you're twisting your body in either direction, you're actually going to cause stress to, to you know, come through the, the structure in various angles. So by using the arms and the body and twisting in, in a multitude of ways, you're putting stress and pressure on all of the fascia in the upper body. Because in this kind of training, you stand in a stance and you don't move. So that pressure, that pressure in that stance is going to build your legs. Mm -hmm. You know, Master Lee knows this very well. You know, when you started training back in the day, most most teachers said, "Okay, you know, open up, show me your horse," and you would, you know, open your legs up and drop your weight down, and you would hold this stance until the teacher said, "You know, okay," mm -hmm. and it was a test. And a lot of teachers would go away, sit down, and start reading the paper. And, you uh, know, finish you, eating. <laughs> And I, and I bet you Master Lee's got some incredible stories of his teachers and, you know, okay, we're going to do horse training, you know, horse dance training. And students today have no idea what some of the older people, you know, went through for training. And I can only imagine what, what Master Lee went through. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, you know what the definition of uh, old school is, right? Yes. It's the day before you got in. Yep. <laughs> it's the day before you joined uh, the school or the organization. <laughs> but, uh, you know, getting back to um, the fascia, and I know that Malik, the last time you mentioned uh, your interest in the, in the fascia and also the training, I think everybody recognizes now the, the benefit of functional training. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you're doing weight, weight lifting, you're doing aerobics or plyometrics, it's, it has to be functional, it has to be something that you can use. Uh, for everyday life, and it's not just about building big muscles, mm -hmm. but uh, the uh, the fascia and also the tendons and the ligaments. These are functional because as as people age, as we all age, you know, the ability to uh, maintain our posture and to uh, maintain our balance is so vital. And uh, Master Dugas was saying about standing. So one thing for our audience is uh, a simple thing, is what we call standing training, or what we call Zhan Zhuang in, in Chinese martial arts. It's a very, very challenging. Now, Malik, have you heard of Zhan Zhuang? No. I it's false. It's translates as the standing post training. Now, I've heard it you know actually. about you know about uh, well, you're a martial artist mm -hmm. and you know about the uh, horse dance, right? Yes. Now, now this is actually simpler than a horse dance, but also more difficult. So all you do is you stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Mm -hmm. You um, you bend your knees slightly, and you hold your arms up like you're hugging a tree, right? right? I got and you that. hold that posture. Now, I can guarantee that if you haven't trained in this method, you can take any linebacker from the NFL, challenge them to, to stand still for 10 minutes. At the end of 10 minutes, their whole body will be shaking. Mm. But it's so powerful. This, this is so powerful because not only does it strengthen the tendons and ligaments and the tissues and the fascia, mm -hmm. but... More importantly, equally importantly, it, it, it drives your chi, your energy, through all your energy circuits. Mm -hmm. This is uh, an overlooked aspect of, of training, and it's so beneficial because you're not driving your heart rate up. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're putting tension on your body, driving the blood and energy through all, the, all your fibers, Mm -hmm. And yet, you're not creating any undue stress on your heart. Okay. Okay. That's absolutely... That's it. Now, I learned about it uh, from two things. First, I was introduced, uh, introduced to standing post exercises from um, a friend of mine who studied uh, Falun Dafa. Real good guy. Okay. So, that was... Um, uh, well, a lot of, it got a bad, lot of bad news. But just like anything, regardless if it's Christianity or Muslims, you got your good points and you got your bad points. Okay? Yeah. Bad people with that. But I got to say one thing that the uh, the exercises actually does work, and I forgot the Chinese name that they use in um, Falun Gong. But then the second one was in Spring Forest Qigong, when you go down and you put your hands out and you open up and then yeah. you close, just like well that. in Spring Forest, yeah, in Spring Forest Qigong we also have this standing post, but we 
we even have a more challenging uh, exercise. It's in level two, where you uh, you use the sword fingers. You use the sword fingers and you hold the sword fingers mm -hmm. out or the palm, which they do in uh, in the Hong Ga. So you you use mm -hmm. the uh, the palm, thunder palm. We call it thunder palm, mm -hmm. and you stand like that. If you can stand like that, you know, for a couple of hours, you'll be very, very strong. I guarantee you, <laughs> you'll be amazingly strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and the strength will be what we call internal strength. Mm -hmm. By that we mean it's it's building from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you'll see people who who don't look muscular. They they don't even look athletic, mm -hmm. but they're really, really, really strong. And if you try to try to push them over or try to unbalance them, you're going to have a hard time. That's absolutely true. And that's a standing post exercise, thunder palm, spring forest uh, level two teaches a thunder pause. And yes, we do have 10 minutes. Dale, I'm trying to find that uh, arm body video of you. Uh, I emailed it to the support staff. It's okay. Um, when I look for Google, and this also for the radio people out there, when I look for, if I Google that on the YouTube, what, where, yeah. keywords, what I look for? Uh, Dale Dugas Iron Body, I would pro I would imagine. Iron Body Demo? Yeah. yeah, I'm looking for that. Um, what would be a picture? Would it be, uh, I got Dale Dugas Iron Body, page 12, Kung Fu. I got Breaking the Bottom Brick. Oh dear Lord! Uh, go to if you go. It's my Combat Iron Palm Iron Vest Association. That's my channel on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Or if you go to uh, Dale Dugas Lickack. <laughs> I know licensed acupuncturist. It sounds kind of kind of strange. It is funny, yeah. May I ask, Master Dugas? You you mentioned the, the twisting and so forth in the yes. your iron body training. How about the uh, body? Um, Body tapping, like uh, tapping, and uh, you you use those yes, hitting yes. techniques. As I was taught, my teacher taught me the internal stuff first. So we did all the standing and the holding postures, and then the twisting postures. So what he showed us was we did ten minutes of standing in the beginning, warming up. We did all the moving exercises, and then we did a seated meditation. And then once you did that for a year or two, depending on what level you wanted to train with, then after that, you started actually hitting yourself. And you start with your hands, and, you know, I would hit my whole body, front to back, top to bottom. Mm -hmm. And as I got, as I progressed in the training, you start using tools. So in other words, once I get used to slapping myself with my hands, I get a little stick and then start tapping with a stick. Some people take a bunch of chopsticks and they, they tape one end or they, they bind it at one end and then it's like this loose kind of bamboo broom. And then they start tapping themselves with the chopsticks. I have a piece of um, copper wire. It's, it's copper wire that's been unfurled so it looks like a copper broom. Mm -hmm. And I hit myself with that and it makes a really loud racket. It's like tsh, tsh, this metallic clacking. So, of course, my wife and I are trying to watch TV or something and I'm like, hey, I can train while we're watching TV. So I'm sitting there whacking myself, and of course it's making this really big cracking metallic sound, like a kung fu movie. You know, and of course the wife's getting mad, you know, but I'm like, hey, look, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to you know, do two things at once. I'm multitasking. It never works, so I have to put it down because she gives me the evil eye, you know. And, uh. I, all right, finishing up on the seven minutes that we got left, we're going to put on yep. the demo of you, Dale, doing the arm body. Go ahead whenever okay. you're ready, Robert. Okay, that was the demo for the arm um, body. And for, again, with that, with the twisting, with the tapping, what we actually did with that was strengthen the fascia. That's put on the that's the wetsuit on top of the muscle yep. in order to help to prevent injury, correct? It is. And then you can activate it. We do something called filling where I kind of imagine my body's like a big bass drum. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not connected to any breathing or anything. It's just I fill my body and I get a very drum-like, you know, 
mm -hmm. rebound action. So when people hit me, if I don't if I don't move, I can kind of bounce people away from me. So when they hit me, they just get kind of rebounded back into them, and it, it's kind of funny to watch because people kind of stumble and fall. You know, uh, those were two of my kung fu brothers who were hitting me, and I wasn't gonna stand there and give them a frame, what we call frame, because you know it. it it's not what you're supposed to do. In a fight, you're going to be moving, and it's great that you can kick me in the ribs, kick me in the spine, punch me, and I don't really care. I'm just going to move around and do what I'm supposed to do. But that's, that's just a little bit of what you can do if you put your mind to something, mm -hmm. you get, and you get some kind of training material, and you work on it. Like Master Lee talked about, this is a kind of gong fu that I do. I do iron skill stuff. I like the training. I like training you know, this kind of thing. It, it interests me. I like the benefits because it makes me a very resilient person. Um, it was great when I was working in the security field. You know, now I don't do that any longer. I just treat patients. So, <laughs> But the benefits are there. I still have great health and, and, and you know, hopefully I'm going to be 50 soon and then hopefully I can live to be, you know, 90 or 100 like some of my teachers and grandteachers did. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. something to look forward to and I use this material, you know, to better myself and then, you know, to help other people because when I'm strong, I can give more acupuncture treatments in my clinic. So I use these things to keep me healthy. Okay. Now, um, we got four minutes before the show's over with, so I'm going to tell everybody there in the audience um, again, I got Dale on the show, talked about his iron skills, and Master um, Hanley on the show also to talk about the Dit Dao and everything. Uh, very rarely you come across uh, people out there who know about Dit Dao and know about these skills um, to help you to enhance your athletic and your physical training. Uh, with the arm palm, with the coconuts uh, striking and everything, again, by working on your grip, by working on your forearm and everything, I'm looking for you to be able to hit a ball uh, hit a ball further than what you normally would, be able to throw on one what you formerly would, be able to throw a football, be able to hold a tennis ball racket, all the things as far as the uh, arm palm can, um, the arm palm skills that are learned can enhance your abilities in sports and why is that so important that's to give you the competitive edge because a lot of you out there may be looking for athletic scholarships well this could be your edge that you need in order to get that athletic scholarship a lot of you out there may be able to try to go to get the pros this may be your edge in order to go to the pros you looked at the arm body technique you know a lot of it, a, a lot we've heard about it in kung fu and every time is there a special conditioning system that can actually help you to prevent yourself from having the injury it is it's called arm body training and Dale Dugas is actually does um has actually um been through the training with that um and the most important thing we have a formulation called dit dao now what the dit dao actually does is to enhance your body's ability to be able to heal itself also for the strengthening and conditioning of tendon ligaments and also bone now a good thing is, is that you can go out there and you can find a ligament uh, you can find a dit dao you can throw it on tiger uh, tiger bomb or whatever I mean that's good better thing is, is that you can call these people up and ask them what's the best thing up you can call Dale and you can call master Lee and they can tell you some good stuff that you can actually use the best thing is that you can see these people in person in order for them to give you a diagnostic to actually create for you a system in order to use these ligaments and everything in order for you to develop yourself as a stronger athlete, as a stronger person. Uh, Mr. Uh, Master Hanley, could you give us your contact information, please? Yes. I'm at uh, the Sports Edge Acupuncture in Herndon, Virginia. You can find me online. Just Google Herndon, Virginia, acupuncture, and my uh, my page will come up. Okay, super. And yourself, uh, Master Dugas? Um, you can contact me. I'm at Jade Tree Wellness Center. That's in St. Petersburg, Florida. And the phone number there is 727-344-8690. You can also find me on the web. You can just Google my name, Dale Dugas. I'm at daledugas.com. Okay, all right, and that's um, uh, anything y'all like to add, anyone? Master it's, Lee? It's been a pleasure to uh, be on the same show with all of you, and uh, good luck, and thank you. Okay, and you too, Dale. And everybody out there, go Seattle. This is Health Awareness Talk. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Have a great night, guys. <laughs> you too. Thank you.